Hi, I'm Mike Torville from Evans Cooling Systems. Today we're going to convert this rare 1959 Ferrari to Evans waterless coolant. Now the first question is, why? Why are we going to do this? Well, water or water-based coolants have been used to cool engines for over 100 years for good reasons. Water transfers heat better than anything else. But water has its challenges. It causes corrosion and it has its limitations. So first, water's freezing point is too high and its boiling point is too low. With water's low boiling point, you have the formation of water vapor or steam and the system is under pressure. Evans protects at both ends of the temperature scale from minus 40 degrees to 375 degrees. That's right, Evans boils at 375 degrees and that provides a huge safety margin between the operating temperature and the boiling point. No boiling and no pressure. With Evans wireless coolant, we'll avoid the effects of corrosion and electrolysis as well. So first, it's important to purge the system of water, and that means getting all the old water-based coolant out. So before we get started, we want to make sure we have all the right equipment or well prepared to do the job. So the first thing we'll need is a blower, a high volume, low pressure blower. There's a lot of different types that we can use that will do the job. We also will need our Evans high performance wireless coolant so we have enough product on hand to make sure we can fill the system. We also want to use the Evans prep fluid. This will do a good job of chasing that old water out and flushing the system clean before we add the high performance wireless coolant. Now when we're done, we want to test for water content and the tools we can use for that are a refractometer and that'll help us to gauge the water content. Another means to do that is using the test strips um, that will indicate by color what the water percentage is. The last thing we need to do is put a sticker on the radiator uh, to prevent anybody from mistakenly adding water afterwards. We want to keep it waterless. Here we are underneath the 1959 Ferrari about to drain the system and I'm here with Peter Lombardo from Lombardo Motor Cars in Berlin, Connecticut. Now before we raised the car we took off the radiator cap so now we're going to open up the petcock here, remove the coolant from the radiator and then we're going to open up the block drain and remove the coolant from the block. And once we've done that, then we're going to lower the car and blow air through the system to remove all that coolant that's left behind. Now that we've emptied the radiator of coolant, it's time to empty, empty the engine block of coolant. So in this car, we've located the engine block drains here. Now it's important to remember each car is different and the location of the block drains may be in different places, but once you locate and have access to them, it's a very important step to get the coolant out of the engine block. So now Peter's going to put the radiator cap back on before he begins blowing high volume air through the cooling system. This will force all the remaining coolant out through the radiator and through the block. Okay, now that Peter has completed blowing high volume air through the cooling system and we've caught that remaining coolant through the block and the radiator and catch basins below. Now it's time to button everything up, put the hoses back, put the block drain back and the petcock, close it up and put the prep fluid in and run that through the system. Now we're going to fill the system with prep fluid to flush parts of the cooling system with any residual coolant. Now it's important not to use water to flush the system. So Peter's taking the radiator cap off and he's filling the system now with prep fluid and then we're going to run the engine for about 10 or 15 minutes until it reaches operating temperature with the thermostat open. And then we'll know that the prep fluid has circulated throughout the entire system. Now that we've run prep fluid through the cooling system, we open up the block drain to get the coolant out of the block and we open up the radiator to get all remaining coolant out of the radiator. Then we blew high volume, low pressure air through the system to force out any remaining old coolant and the prep fluid. Now this is what the prep fluid looked like going in and this is what it looked like coming out. Just to demonstrate how important it is to use the prep fluid and blow it all through to get all the old coolant and prep fluid out of the system before adding the high performance wireless coolant. 
after we fill the system with the Evans wireless coolant, we're going to run it again and let the thermostat open to temperature, just as we did before with the prep fluid. And then after we let that run, we're going to test for water content to make sure we're below the 3% level. Now that we've completely filled the system, and we've let it run for about 15 or 20 minutes, let it get up to temperature, brought the car back in, let it cool down, so now we can test for water content. So we're going to take a little sample right out here out of the radiator and use our refractometer to test. And we can see through looking at the refractometer that we're at 55.5 on the brick scale, which means we're at three tenths of a percent water which is well below the 3% tolerance. So that means it's a successful conversion. As an alternative to using a refractometer to test water contact, we can also use test strips. Now we've drawn a small sample of Evans waterless coolant from the radiator, and we're going to use the test strips to dip in there and then match up to the corresponding color to indicate that we've got the correct water percentage as you can see, we're close to 0% water by the color matching. And lastly, once we've put the radiator cap back on, we'll apply the Evans warning sticker on top of the radiator, and that should prevent anybody from adding water to the system. Okay, now that we've completed the successful conversion to Evans waterless coolant, we know that this car is protected for the rest of its life, because Evans is a permanent coolant that will last the life of the engine. But we want to remind you of a few things. Never work on a hot engine. Please make sure that it's cooled on all the way before removing the radiator cap. And please dispose of coolant properly, responsibly, and environmentally safe way. And also, please refer to the written instructions before beginning your conversion to Evans wireless coolants. Thanks.